So 2020 was fun. 2021, I'm sure it's going to be fun as well. I hope about that. Um, but on the plus side, I managed to do a lot of knitting. Alright, so uh, I know it's been a while, uh, and I know I say that every single time that I record, um, because I am sketchy. <laughs> uh, but I really wanted to kind of do a bit of a review on 2020 to kind of see what I've done, show you guys what I've done, mistakes, not mistakes, what I've been wearing the entire time, and all of that stuff. So, without further Without further ado, let me get my phone out, get Ravelry up so that I actually know what I've been making um, and let's get started. Alright, so first knit of 2020, the Stoker Shawl uh, by Vullenbein, mm, yeah, Vullenbein. Um, so this one was knit, I think it, yeah, I cast it on right at the end of 2019 and finished it, uh, I think about mid-January or something. Uh, it's knit with one of my earlier hand-dyed yarns. Um, it's actually a bamboo and merino blend, um, which is really nice. Um, so, just have a look at the fabric. So it's got lots of kind of purples, blues, I think it's got specks of red and black um i was so pleased when i first uh dyed this yarn um because of the bamboo it's ended up being quite pastely because the bamboo doesn't take the dye um so it's only really the um merino wool that has been dyed uh, but it's really soft it's really kind of squishy squashy um and the bamboo kind of gives it a nice sheen as well which is really lovely uh but yeah, really, really happy with this. It was the first shawl I ever knit. I was very confused about how the casting on happened because you start up here and I had no clue what was going on. But I got there and I have been wearing this so much, um, especially uh, last winter because it was the only kind of, you know, shawl I had. Um, most of my other stuff is really, really old, so it's quite nice. Uh, it could do with a good block again because as you can see, probably, um, the lace has kind of just turned into like a straight little bobbly edge, but let's be honest, who can be bothered? Um, yeah, really happy with this one. Uh, Willow loves it as well because uh, she's eaten a bit here. I think I managed to save it fairly well, so, you know. Willow won. Knits zero, which reminds me, uh, I don't have the next knit because Willow too knits zero. Uh, it was her favourite thing to eat, um, to the point where she stole it so many times and ate so many holes in it that it wasn't worth saving. Um, so it ended up in the bin. She's sleeping there, living really innocent. That's why I'm looking that way. Uh, so that was the Western Sky Beret uh, by um, Boylan Knitworks or Caitlin Hunter. Um, really lovely pattern, so much fun to make. Not my style. I don't think I ever actually wore it. Um, but I'll make sure to pop up a photo somewhere uh, of what it looked like because it was really pretty. Sorry, my glasses are really dirty, that's why I keep cleaning them. Um, yeah, really pretty, really lovely to knit, delicious, according to Willow. Um, but I'm not going to knit it again because it's just not my style, um, which is what I've realised. I just realised I may very well have knit two of them because I gave one as a gift to a friend. And I've only put one of them on a Ravelry. So, possibly, there's been 24 knits this year. I'm not sure. But, whatever. It'll be fine. Uh, the next one, I don't have a uh, 
photo of either and I don't have, oh no, I've got a photo of it which I'll pop up, um, but I don't have it with me because my partner brings it with him to work either to use as a blanket when he's driving in his convertible like an absolute weirdo in January uh, <laughs> uh, or to use it as a blanket at work to sleep in but it's a huge scarf um, it was knit in one by one rib uh, using drops Eskimo and Drops, doo -doo -doo, drops Melody, uh, which is a mohair, uh, or possibly an alpaca, I can't remember. Uh, it's huge, uh, and he kept telling me to knit it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, so hence why he mainly uses it as a blanket, <laughs> a portable blanket. Um, but yeah, I'll pop a photo of it up here somewhere. Um, and actually, Willow got to that one as well, and I had to mend it the other day. Um, so that's Willow 3, Knit Wears 1, no, 0. Does the knit, yeah. Let's see, she ate that one, she ate that one, she ate that one, yep. Yeah. Willow 3, Knit Wears 0. Um, next one up. Oh, actually, don't mind me. Next one up, I've worn once because I hate it. Um, so I had some leftovers from another project that I had knit, which I loved. I love the colours. I love the colours together. Ta -da! And I also love the Earwind blouse um, by uh, Faber Lidwear. So I figured, you know, use up some scraps, make another one, it'll be perfect. Um, I'll knit it with short sleeves so that I've got enough yarn. Knit it, you know, with um, just one one row of each because it's easy. Because then you can do the whatever the circular knitting thing is called. Um, and I've worn it once because I hate it. Uh, <laughs> so first off I fucked up the gauge so the gauge is off and it's uh, bigger than expected so it's a bit loose um, it's just a bit floppity floppity I definitely used two big needles for the yarn um, the stripes just don't really look that even uh, I'm not a big fan of the sleeves being this short I don't like it. I don't like the fact that I started with the brown at the bottom and then I finished it off with brown, uh, blue at the top. I just don't like it. Uh, if anybody does like it, give me a shout. Um, you can have it. <laughs> it's not going to be worn. Uh, I tried it on the other day to think, you know, maybe, maybe I changed my mind. Maybe I was just ridiculous at the time. I was not ridiculous. It looks horrible on me. It's too big. I don't like it. Um, yeah, so mistake number one, but Willow hasn't eaten it, so that is Willow 3, knitwear 1. Uh, next one up. This was a um, test knit for Farmer Knitwear. Such a beautiful design, so lovely. Um, very kind of romantic and beautiful and lovely. Uh, Unfortunately, where, while I love the design and I think it's beautiful and gorgeous, I kind of realised that it's just not, once again, like with um, with a beret, you know, it's lovely, it's just not my style. Anyways, it was very much eaten by Willow. I was just about starting to think, oh, maybe I shall, I'll gift it to someone. Uh, I've got a friend that would definitely love this. Uh, and it has been absolutely annihilated by Willow to the point of it being like unrepairable. Got a hole there, we've got a hole there, we've got a hole there, we've got a hole there. Uh, we've got a hole there. We've got a hole there. And we have a hole there. There are holes everywhere. So bad. Um, so basically I think this has to go in the bin because I'm just not going to be able to fix it. 
because uh, it's just so excessive. Uh, I'd, could, Willow loves bobbles. Bobbles and lace are her favourite things to eat. Um, so there we go. Willow for knitwear one. Next up is the Sorrel Sweater by Wool and Pine. I love this. Um, I've worn it so much. It's really, really warm. Uh, it's really cosy. It's really comfy. Um, it's a lovely sweater. There are some mistakes and fuck ups in general. Um, I definitely should have swatched um, both the, uh, the the yoke pattern and the stockinette because what's happened is it's a lot looser in gauge up at the yoke than it is especially on the arms. I don't know if you can see that, um, which is a bit annoying. And the yoke is slightly too long. Um, but honestly, I love it anyway, so it's fine. And this is knit with... It's made with Sweet Georgia Yarns, Cash Lux Spark in the colourway Gelato, that's the, the main fingering weight, and some, gone, uh, some Drops Kid Silk in the light pink colourway. Um, the Sweet Georgia Yarns uh, was a gift from my partner's parents last Christmas, and so sweet, and I really love it. I'm really happy with that, uh, despite all the things that I messed up that I would have done better next time. Right, next is the Ripple Bralette by Jessie May Design Designs. So, there you go. Uh, this is knit in the leftovers from the oh the antiquity blouse, which is the pattern I tested for Father Nowhere. Um, it's really soft. It's a non-super wash, um, and the yarn that I got when I kind of started learning how to dye. Um, so very kind of very cheap and basic. Love this. It's really comfy. It's really cosy. I've worn it a lot at home, just especially in the summer when it was warm, as kind of loungewear. Um, not something I would probably wear outside of the house because it's quite see-through. Um, and yeah, but it's it's really lovely and comfy and cosy, and I would probably knit it again in a slightly darker colour so that I can wear it somewhere else. Big fan. All right, next up. Another favourite, this is the Diagonally Jumper, also by Father Network. I think you'll start sensing a bit of a theme here. <laughs> um, so this is what that looks like. So this yarn was actually the kind of yarn that got me started on my actually start creating an anarchy yarn. Um, because I happened to have two skeins left over uh, after knitting this and I thought you know what let's see if anybody might be interested because there's you know a lot of people when I was dyeing it were saying they liked how it looked and stuff uh, and I sold it within 24 hours uh, <laughs> which was a big deal to me and I kind of thought you know what I'm gonna give it a go uh, so it always makes me kind of happy when I'm looking at it um, so this, this colourway has been slightly modified since, uh, but basically it's Comfort DK and the colourway is Calathean Dragon. Um, so if you have a look at this one, it's got some yellow bits in it, which the colourway doesn't do now. And the light blue isn't quite as prominent. Um, but yeah, absolutely love this, love this pattern, uh, love the colourway, um, just love everything about it. Um, the only thing that I would change in the future, I would make the body slightly longer because it's a bit on the short side um, and I've realised I kind of like it to be a little bit longer um, because sometimes it just kind of rides up even when I'm wearing high waisted stuff, which to be fair I do all the time, but still. Um, so, 100% would recommend, we'll probably knit another one soon. And, next one, I'm wearing. Uh, this is the Tenya by... Um, Caitlin Hunter again. Uh, I have knit one of these before. Um, loved that one as well. Did felt it a couple of months ago, so it's now unwearable. 
but I've got this one, so it's okay. Um, I have been living in this. Uh, it's so nice, it's so comfy, and it's knit in my bourgeois base, uh, which has got some silk in it, uh, and it's a high twist as well. So it gives it a really kind of nice drape. I don't know if you can see the fabric, but it's really nice and flowy and floaty and really lovely. Um, and the colourway is Emerald City, which I haven't dyed for a while, but I think it might be time to do that again, because I really, really love this. Um, it's kind of similar to Bottle, but it's variegated uh, and just a bit, you know, it's got different shades of green rather than a, a solid like this one. Um, but yeah, um, love this. I mean, I've knitted twice, so what can I say? It's definitely one of my favourite patterns, um, and I'm wearing it all the time. And the kind of, yeah, it's just not pilling. This yarn just seems to be very pill resistant. There's a couple of bits here, but I think with a high twist, uh, it really kind of avoids the kind of pilling. I'm guessing the silk might, might help as well, because silk is quite strong uh, as a fibre. Next one, one of my most worn knits over the summer, by far. Um, this is the, it's covered in hair. My hair, not cat hair, for once. Uh, yeah, so this is the Contrast Racer Bra uh, by Jessie May. Um, loving the fabric. What are you doing? He's considering using the basket of uh, knits as a bed. But he's gone now, so it's okay. Uh, anyways, uh, Jessie May Designs, uh, Contrast Racer Bra. Basically lived in this all of, uh, all of the summer. Uh, really, really nice. Um, did I show you the wrong way around? Is it this way? Yes, it is. I showed you, it probably doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, really, really nice when it's really hot outside. Um, wool is not actually hot. Wool uh, adapts to your temperature uh, because otherwise sheep would die in the summer. Um, so it's a really cool material and works really well for summer knits. And I love this. And I'm definitely going to knit some more in different colours um, for next summer. Um, this one is uh, knit in 800 degrees on the Comfort DK base. I've currently taken it off the website because uh, I don't think I'll be dyeing it again. Uh, but if for some reason I suddenly get lots of people asking for it, then I might consider it again. But discontinued for now. Okay, what's next? Um, ooh, my first ever pair of socks. Uh, so <sighs> last year in February, you know, young, innocent, spending time in public. I went to um, Unravel uh, in Farnham, uh, which was lovely. And one of the things that I really wanted to do when I went there was uh, to buy some hand-dyed self-striping sock yarn. Um, so I, I meant to knit them on the flight to America in March. That didn't happen. So I figured, okay, I'll just knit them anyways. Um, so here we go. Uh, they have been worn. They're not washed. I just, yeah. So excuse me. Um, I have three pairs of hand knit socks and they're just basically just being worn on rotation at the moment because I'm always cold. Um, so 10 out of 10, would recommend love these um i knit these using the full and vine favorite sock pattern uh, which is a free pattern really good really easy to understand um love that and the yarn is dragon hill studio and the colorway is regal and i love it and i knit these in no time at all because it was um, they're self-strapping socks that's that's what you do basically um Next one is Magpie Tendency. Ta da! So, I don't know how I feel about 
this. It's really comfy, it's really lovely to layer, especially in the summer. Uh, it's very cropped, so you can't really use it as just a top. Um, but, so this colorway is a discontinued colorway because it didn't really sell. Um, and it's not my style, really. Um, but I had one skein which ended up with some random blue speckles in it uh, so I couldn't really sell it so I figured I might as well just knit something um, and I had some more left over of the um, the kind of bronzy colourway you can see there um, which I used on the Eowyn blouse that I showed earlier that I didn't appreciate <laughs> uh, but I love this colourway and I've actually turned it into a regular colourway now, which it wasn't originally, so this is salted caramel. Um, so yeah, uh, the top bit here is basically night sky uh, with the, on the caramel, or well, the caramel colourway, and this is freezer nightmares, which I don't dye anymore, but if for some reason anybody wants it, happy to do it. Um, love this pattern, really fun, uh, very interesting construction and different. Um, very quick to knit because it's got a very loose gauge uh, so you can not a problem knit it with a mini skein and a full skein and you'll you'll have a whole top which is really good if you've only got you know one skein of really special yarn which is kind of the point of the pattern as well um, but yeah I think I'll probably knit this again but using different yarns because I do really like it um, just these are just not my colours um, so yeah, I might try to wear it, but if for some reason you love it, give me a shout. Um, next one. Oof, love this one. Uh, this is a test knit for Wool and Pine. Uh, this is the Wild Wind, um, which is a lace top. Um, like so. I'll make sure to pop a photo up um, because, well, you probably can't see much. Uh, but basically it's two pieces, knit flat, they look exactly the same, front and back, and then they're just pieced together, uh, the side and the top. Um, and then if you want to you can add those little tassels, which I didn't originally plan on doing, but I love them, so yeah, had to do it. Um, this is quite complicated lace I found, um, you kind of have to actually, you know, focus on it. Uh, normally I'm quite good at knitting and doing other things at the same time, but with this one I really couldn't do that. Um, it was a struggle. Um, I kind of got there in the end, but I made many mistakes in the beginning and had to rip it all out and start again. But honestly, I love this. Um, it's just so nice another layering piece that's perfect for the summer and I really enjoyed wearing it. This is knit using the Beaujolais base again and the colour is Damson Jamson which no Aussie looks like this. Uh, so I've recently added some more to the shop um, after quite a while of not having it. Don't you dare. <sighs> Right, would recommend if you like some involved lace. Next up, my second pair of socks. Uh, I've realised it's really nice to have a pair of socks on the needles because it's just so, you know, you just keep going. You don't really need to think, uh, which is quite good. Um, so, here we go. These have seen quite a lot of wear already. Uh, these are um, same pattern, the favourite socks pattern by Vol and Vine, um, and these are knit using Black Me Out on the Night Sky base. Um, so, yeah, love these. Um, and I actually managed to get another pair of socks out of these, so they're coming later. Um, but yeah, I really like the kind of like micro striping you get, which is really lovely. And. Next up, we have got my first brioche pro project. Um, so this is the All About That Brioche shawl. Um, and 
I got these two yarns, they're from Shing Fibre, um, they're gifts from, once again, my partner's parents, um, and I just thought that they would look really lovely together, um, so I wanted something that kind of could utilise them both. Um, so they're both on the merino single base. Uh, yeah, all about that brioche. Uh, love it. Uh, it was a perfect kind of first brioche uh, project. Um, and yeah, love that. Also brioche, so difficult to learn. So easy once you've learned it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, that's what this looks like. I've worn this lots as well. Um, it's been really good to have kind of the DK weight um, shawl and this one to kind of swap between um, so yeah happy times love it would definitely recommend that pattern it's great um, especially if you want to try getting into brioche knitting oh the next one here we go oh no actually the next one is the hat I'm wearing um, this was knit using leftovers of the uh, Damson Jamson um, on the bourgeois base that I had from the uh, Wildwin top thing. Um, had some leftovers, wanted a hat, did a one by one rib, did some decreases, bobs your ankle. Um, I've basically been living in this all winter uh, to the point of I should probably knit another hat because it's going to get gross soon. Um, but it's really nice, it's really, I really like the silk in this because it kind of, I don't know, just feels a bit nice and squishy and soft. Um, I just held it double uh, so that it's kind of DK weight, uh, which I really like. So, yeah, that's that's all I've got to say about that. Um, next one, Labour of Love. The one, the only, the ghost horse of sweater. Woo! Yeah, this, this took a while. Um, <laughs> I love this jumper. I've worn it a lot. Um, and for something that I've worn this much, it's actually not peeling that much, uh, which I'm quite surprised by. Um, it's really like I've been wearing it since I, you know, all the time basically since I finished it. Um, but yeah, so this is knit on my comfort base um which is 100 percent superwash merino um and it's the two colorways are calcifer and dust uh, i do sell these in the shop as well as a kit uh, with a bit of a discount just because i've had so many people that really love this so that's probably one of my best selling products at this point um but yeah lovely pattern so happy with it it takes a while to finish, uh, but it was definitely worth it because this is probably by far my favourite sweater. Um, and Willow has a leaf in it. Um, I think we can kind of see when I started learning when Willow would eat all of my stuff. Um, because, you know, things aren't eaten anymore. And next up, because I was, you know, I was on the brioche train, so I had to keep going. Um, here we go. Uh, I had some leftovers of calcifer uh, after the ghost sauce sweater because I caked up too much by mistake. <laughs> I didn't realise that apparently one skein of calcifer would be enough for that whole jumper, which is insane to me. Um, but yeah, uh, I had some leftovers and I had some more dyed up, so I figured, you know what? Because uh, I had this uh, Drops uh, brushed alpaca in curry um, as well, and they just looked amazing together, so I I needed it. Um, originally, I wanted to knit... Uh, yeah, I wanted to knit the Aloft uh, from pom-pom number 32 um, using both of the colourways um, but I realised there you go uh, unfortunately 
these two, they just don't, they didn't look that good knit together. Uh, I liked it as a bit of a detail at the bottom to knit them together, but I didn't want it all over the jumper, so instead I swapped to brioche and I improvised everything basically. Um, so, no pattern, pure improvisation. Love this, it's so warm. Uh, I've worn it a lot, um, and yeah, just. It's just so squishy. So much yarn. Uh, I held Calcifer, which is the comfort base double for this stuff, um, except for the uh, the hems and the ribs and stuff, uh, because that stuff uh, is single Calcifer held double with the drops brushed on packer. All right, let's see. Now we're going on to a whole bunch of stuff that I don't have. Uh, with me because we're entering November. First up, uh, I knit the Eclipso hat uh, by Abye Knits. Um, I'll pop a photo up because I did get some photos. Uh, this was a gift for my brother uh, and I dyed the yarn specifically for this project. Um, I am thinking about making it regular because I'm, really, I'm a really big fan of it, um, but this was on the Comfort DK base. And then I also knit a cowl using the same stitch pattern as um, in the Eucalypto hat so that he got a kind of matching set. Um, the stitch is a bit fiddly to make but I think the effect is amazing so it was totally worth it. Um, I absolutely love how it turned out in the end um, and I'm kind of jealous and I want it myself, let's, let's face it. Um, the next one that I finished was um, gift for my dad. Uh, <laughs> so there's a very famous Swedish skier called Ingmar Stian Mike um, and he was you know the world's best skier uh, like downhill slalom skier or something in the 70s at some point when my kid, my parents were kids basically and he used to always wear um, these funny like skiing hats um, and my dad for years has been going on about um, the one he uh, had with little bears on the sides um, and how he just loves them. Um, so the original has got quite stark colours, um, I'll pop a photo up somewhere uh, of what it looks like. Um, and my dad is not, not for stark colours um, but I figured it was it would be good in a kind of more muted colours, uh, so that's what I did. Um, so I've got a photo of me wearing it because I figured I would not be able to get my dad to model it for me, but maybe I'm wrong, maybe he would. Um, and it was knit using a bit of a mix, I had some leftovers, uh, but the grey bits are the dust colourway on Comfort. Um, and According to my mum, uh, dad's been pretty much wearing it all the time since Christmas, so I think overall that was a successful gift. Uh, so, yeah. And the pattern was a free one from Yer Bougan. Um Yeah, I modified it slightly because why well, follow a pattern if you don't want to? Um, but yeah. Next one uh, was a gift bag. Uh, for my mum, so rather than wrap her gifts, which was from Bella Rock Apothecary, uh, which is a small independent um, business making bath stuff. <laughs> um, and rather than wrap it normally, uh, I thought it might be a good idea to make a little bag to give it, give to her in. So I used some scraps and I made the Fuggles Christmas dice slash treasure bag by uh, Heather and Hops, um, who not only is a lovely person but also a great designer um, and yeah I literally finished that in the evening um, super quick um, and it was really cute and I figured you know that way she can reuse it for other things if she wants to. Um, and last but not least the Fairy Gathering socks, and I've got a little goosey goosey, uh, oh whatever, there's a little thing sticking out here, um, but it's got a really cool 
texture on there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, and this was my leftover of the um, uh, Black Me Out colourway uh, that I used for the previous socks. And then I just had some contrasting heels and, uh, no, not heels, toes and cuffs. Um, so that I could, you know, make some socks. And I made some short, short socks instead. Um, really love these. The, um, the texture kind of gives you a bit of extra warmth as well, which is really lovely. And yeah, I don't really have much to say about that other than great pattern, would recommend socks. And last but not least, something else that I don't have a photo of either. Um, and uh, I don't have anything, but I do have the yarn that I used to dye it, uh, to knit with it. There we go. Uh, so my partner was harassing me for a good month and a half while I was trying to finish gift knitting by making him a hat. Um, so he wanted something grey and a bit variegated and maybe black, I don't know. So I dyed up two different types of yarn he got to pick, so this is what he went with. Um, and I just made the hipster hat by Petite Knits and he's been wearing it every, every day since I made it to him, so that's why don't have a photo. Uh, I have not even blocked it because uh, I literally gave it to him and he put it on. So that was it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is it. I think that is 23 knits in 2020, which is almost two knits a month, which is insane. Um, but you know, that's what happens when you're at home all the time. <clears throat> Anyways, I've got a massive pile of knits here now that I need to do something about, so I shall love you and leave you, try and edit this rambling mess of a mess together, and hopefully I will try to record a proper episode very soon, give you an update on what's going on. Thank you very much, bye.